Hi, it's Katie, and I have another food prep video. This is kind of a bonus. This footage is from May, and uh, I just recently found it, so I thought I'd go ahead and put it together. And a lot of this video is about kraut. The first several minutes are all about sauerkraut, so I'm going to can some kraut and make some kraut and make some different kinds of kraut. So if you're not interested in kraut, just hang on. There's more to this video than just sauerkraut. Um, but I'm going to start by canning some kraut. I made a big five-gallon bucket full of kraut. It was... I think it was like five or six heads of cabbage. And when I make such a large amount, I can't store that much in my refrigerator, so I usually can it. Now, canning it with the heat will destroy a significant amount of the good bacteria in you know, fermented sauerkraut. But there's a lot of times where I'm gonna cook this anyway. I just enjoy the flavor of sauerkraut and I like cooking like pork with it. So having it heated and cooked is not a huge concern for me. I do like to eat it raw on occasion, but cooking it is also something that I enjoy. So um, you'll notice I'm specifically not telling you exactly what I'm doing here. If you're gonna can food, whether it's your first time or not, I highly recommend that you get your information from a reputable source. So not to say that I'm not reputable source, um, but you know what I mean. So get yourself the ball canning book or check out your local county extension office. Somebody who knows what they're talking about is where you want to get your information from. Um, but for this sauerkraut, I'm hot packing them in quart jars in a water bath canner. And um, so I'm just packing hot kraut into hot jars and then I'm going to put them in my canner and process them. And a few tips I will tell you is it can get chaotic really fast. So when you have a minute, you want to clean up. You want to keep things neat and orderly as possible. Another tip is you don't want to start timing your processing time until it's come back to a rolling boil. So I'm just going to can these quart jars and I'm going to pull them out and let them cool. And I've already done a second batch of jars waiting to go in the canner. It's hot work and it's kind of time consuming, so you wanna be organized when you approach canning, especially if you're doing several batches. So I had some off camera cans ready to go or jars ready to go, ready to go in to start a whole new cycle. So because I had canned all my kraut, I went ahead and made some more. This is gonna be a smaller batch and I really wanted to try out this new jar that I got. It's a two gallon Anchor Hawking glass jar. So I'm gonna chop up a whole bunch of sauerkraut and salt it. I have a whole video on how to make sauerkraut, which I can link down below. Um, I kind of just eyeball things at this point. So I'm just going to slice the cabbage up with a knife, kind of coarsely chopped, salt it and set it aside. And this next part's time-lapsed over, I think about 15 minutes, but you can see how it wilts down. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then once it's wilted, I'm gonna go ahead and start packing it into the large jar that I have. And I'm gonna put some in and then sort of pack it down and put some more in and pack it down. And as I pack it down, the moisture will start to release from the cabbage. And you can see how eventually the moisture will come up to the surface and the cabbage will be nice and compact down. And usually I always forget to save a few cabbage leaves, even though I had, I think, two or three cabbages in this batch. I couldn't remember to save a few outer leaves to put on the surface. So I did have a little bit of this red cabbage, which will work fine. And I'm just going to put some leaves on the top just to keep everything submerged under the brine. And then you just want to weight it down. And there's a lot of different ways to weight it down. You can buy weights that fit inside of a fermenting crock or you can use just really well scrubbed rocks, like river rocks I've seen people use. I've even used like hand weights inside of a plastic bag to weigh everything down. There's just a lot of different ways to do it. You just kind of have to play around with it and see what works. But as long as your vegetables are submerged under your brine, you should have no problem at all. So with the leftover cabbage, I'm gonna make an apple onion cabbage kraut. And I talked about this on my grocery haul, I think two weeks ago, that I wanted to make this video. I didn't realize I already had this footage. So I might do this again in a whole video to explain it in more detail. But basically, I'm going to use some of that salted cabbage. 
And then I sliced up a couple large onions and a couple large apples. And I'm just gonna mix everything together. And generally I like to have about two thirds cabbage and then one third is the mixture of apple and onion. That's just like the uh, ratio that my family likes, but it's totally up to you. And then I'm gonna pack it into this jar. This is a bale jar. It's called a Fido jar. Um, it's made in Italy and it's you can find them easily at those kind of stores, uh, discount department stores like Ross, TJ Maxx, um, Marshalls. So check out those sort of stores. They also sell them at my local Wegmans, which is really awesome. So this time to weigh it down, um, I'm using some carrots and I'm just kind of crisscrossing them to make sort of a raft and then pressing them down with a little cup and clamping my jar down. So those are just going to sit on my counter for a few weeks to ferment. So that's everything I've done with the kraut. Now I'm going to move on to some chicken. And if you watch my grocery hauls, you'll know that I got a bunch of these 10 pound bags of chicken legs for 39 cents a pound. So I go through and I take all of the skin off. I very, very rarely do I cook chicken parts with the skin on, even when I grill and things like that, I always take the skin off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all at once so that I don't have to do it each time. So there's my 10 pounds of chicken legs all de-skinned. And I'm just gonna pack these into food saver bags and freeze them. Well, my husband's packing them in food saver bags, helping me out here. I like to use reusable packaging as much as possible, but this was a lot of chicken and they're very oddly shaped, so food savers do a great job of uh, keeping things fresh. Next I'm going to make some apple snacks, and I don't have an apple core, so I just use a melon baller, and I do some slices and then melon ball out some more of the core, and then do some more slices, and then when I get past that area I will melon baller it again or not. And then some of the slices still had a little piece of core in them. I just use a little cutter to remove that. You can use a little cookie cutter. I'm using um, like a icing decorating tip. It's just something that seemed like the right size. You could use a knife too. Or you could just leave them in. As long as it's not you know, bothering you, you don't have to take them out. So once I get all of my slices, I think those are about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and put them in some lemon water that's just like about a tablespoon of lemon juice in a, about a cup of water. That just will help the apples from turning too brown. And then I'm going to close them up in the dehydrator. And these are going to dehydrate at about 135 degrees for I think it took about six to eight hours. And that's what they looked like when they were done. And I just pack them up in a mason jar. And these are a great snack. They don't have any added sugar or any preservatives. They're just really delicious. Next, I'm gonna blend up some spinach. I got this big bag of spinach at Costco and I knew most of it was gonna go into smoothies. And I also have a few other recipes I like to add pureed spinach to. My spinach avocado pasta, which I have a recipe on my channel. Um, I knew that I could use these uh, pureed spinach for that too. It's also great just to have pureed spinach on hand. You can throw it into sauces like pasta sauce or throw into um, even soup or chili, anything to add a little bit of extra veggies. So I'm just packing my Vitamix full of spinach. I think I added a little drizzle of water just to get it going, but it's pretty much just straight spinach. And then I have this little brownie bite pan. It's a silicone pan and it ended up working out really, really well. I used the same pan for my caramelized onions in one of my previous food preps. But I'm just gonna scrape everything out of the Vitamix pitcher into this pan, and then I'm doing this sort of grout technique. Worked out really well, kept everything in the little cavities, smoothed out the tops. And then once everything is smooth, I pop it in the freezer and just freezed it for six hours. I don't exactly remember. Overnight would work fine, or until they're firm, basically. And then I just pop them out and store them in this plastic container, or you could store them in like a gallon Ziploc bag or something like that. And like I said, these were really helpful to have on hand. I think I want to do this again. So that's everything I have for my food prep for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I'd really appreciate it if you could give my video a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy cooking and crafting like I do. 
Thanks, guys.